Are you ready to take the plunge into 3D printing fishing lures? I'm gonna give you an overview of the terrain and what deals you might wanna pick up this Black Friday. All right, so there's two main technologies in consumer level 3D printing. You have FDM and resin 3D printing. So FDM is probably the one everybody has seen if you've even looked into 3D printing, right? You have a, a tool head that runs around, heats up some plastic, squirts it out, and builds up the model layer by layer. Then we have resin 3D printing, which is not as popular as the filament 3D printing, but it is the best for fishing lures in my humble opinion, whether you're talking about hard lures or molds. So let's break them down and figure out why you would want to buy one over the other and why you'll eventually end up with both. Then I'll break down some Black Friday deals that I really like on all these stuff. So let's break down FDM printing. And if you only want to print fishing lures, why you do not want one of these printers. The material they use is generally not heat resistant enough for molds. Uh, yes, you can shoot molds. People do it all the time, but you're going to get four or five uses out of them and uh, it's going to fall apart on you, right? And that's not fun because you're going to spend hours printing this mold to get three or four shots. Not worth it, in my opinion. Waste of filament, waste of time. The other big thing if you're printing a hard plastic lure is you ultimately don't have control over the weighting and the distribution of material in your printer when you're designing it. So when you're printing an FDM um, part, anything, a lure, a mold, it you take it out of your CAD program or whatever you designed it in and you burn it into a tool called a slicer. This converts that model into basically a language the printer can understand. Now you do this for both FDM and resin, but FDM, again, I don't wanna say can't print solid, but it's it's kind of like injection molding, right? You have infill to fill in the, the model, the main body of the model, right? You can have hollow parts in there for sure, but anything that is quote unquote solid in your model will get what's called infill in your print. It won't print solid. And so what that means is depending on the infill density, the type of infill you use, they have all these different patterns, um, you will get different weight in your in lure. So it is extremely time consuming to design something in a design program, take it over into the slicer, figure out what those settings are to make it act like you want to. And then if you want to give that model to someone else to do it, they'll then you have to tell them all these things you did to make it work. And ultimately the material is not as strong as resin, right? We'll, we'll do some testing here in a bit on the channel. So hit that subscribe button on different materials and different techniques for putting lures together. But uh, the PLA and the PETG when it comes to fishing lures specifically are not as strong as a resin designed fishing lure, right? You might be familiar with resin lures. They, they make them all the time. Some of the earliest lures like the bingo uh, made in Texas was resin. A lot of the bigger glide baits, swim baits are made out of resin, hand poured resin. Um, and so it, it's pretty much the same technology, right? So if you can get a, a strong lure out of uh, a poured resin mold, you can get a strong lure out of a UV printed resin. Where FDM printers excel, it's what I call functional parts. Anything I'm printing for my kayak, I'm printing on the FDM printer. Any uh, brackets for all the storage around my shop, I'm printing in FDM. It excels at that kind of stuff. Um, the variety of materials that are available are kind of made for that stuff. Although I tend to stick with PLA, PETG, and TPU. That's just me. Uh, you can get uh, a different variety of materials, carbon fiber, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, they give you different uh, material properties. But at the end of the day, the detail is just not there from my standpoint, right? If you're going to bring something to the market, you want it to generally look as cool as possible, the most detail as possible, the smoothest surface as possible. Now, it's not that FDM printed lures will not catch fish, they certainly will. I mean, people catch fish on blocks of wood, so it's not the detail that matters from the fish's standpoint necessarily, but from a market standpoint, from a catching the fisherman standpoint, those details really matter and ultimately, that's why I end up with resin. 
And when you're talking about molds, again, I mentioned that you're not going to get the detail, you're not going to get the heat resistance, and you're not going to get the lifetime of usage that you will out of a resin 3D printer. So the other one last benefit on the FDM side is that it is pretty much once the print is done, you can pull it off the printer and you can start going to town. You can use it right away if you want to. There's no post-processing. There's nothing to do afterwards. It is not messy. It is not really toxic compared to resin 3D printing. Right. Uh, I wouldn't still do it in your house, but you don't need like some crazy ventilation system to do it. And, you know, it'll sit in the garage just fine. So if you're going to buy an FDM printer, because that's where you want to start, Bamboo Labs, any printer they have, they're all great. They're all fantastic. You can go down the rabbit hole of Creality's and Sovols and build your own Vorons. But seriously, if it's your first 3D printer, just find the Bamboo Lab printer that fits in your budget range and buy it and be done with it. And start having fun. All right, resin 3D printers. You want to basically stick with the what I call mid range resin 3D printers, uh, also called 10 inch, right? Your Elegoo Saturns, your Photon Mono M7s. There's a, a, a ton of them out there, right? There's a ton of them. And they all have almost exactly the same quality that you're going to get across that line. Uh, you're not going to see a difference in quality unless you break out your magnifying glass or your microscope, right? It's irrelevant in this, in this arena these days. You want to stay away from the small ones uh, because you're just really not going to have a lot of build volume to do anything on. Uh, and it's kind of a waste in my mind, right? Your single cavity molds or, you know, smaller lures, probably not useful. Uh, you want to stay away from the big ones, the really big ones, because that has a whole different learning curve on it. And they're extremely, extremely slow. The, the physics, the dynamics of that print is way, way different on the large scales like the Jupiter, for example. Uh, it's going to be way more struggle to print something on there. Just avoid it for now. So when you're looking at the mid-range printers, again, I, I don't think there's really much of a difference here. Um, the, the differences are going to be minor in usability. I'll say that. So I use Elegoo Saturn 3 Ultra and Elegoo Saturn 4 Ultra. Um, if you're getting a new one, I would really suggest the Elegoo Saturn 3 Ultra. It has a larger build volume than the 4. Uh, it uses kind of tried and true mechanics of just a simple build plate, a simple vat, and away you go. And it's dirt friggin' cheap right now, dude. 289 or something like that. It's amazing like it's insane that you get network printing extreme high quality good speed for 289 i mean holy crap any cubic line of printers i hear good things about them my buddy norris uses them uh engraves.com if you want to have a lure designed or 3d printed by the way so he uses a mix of elegus and any cubics uh the 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 thing that he really likes about the any cubics is the ability to uh, monitor them with a phone app. Um, so that's helpful if, you know, you got a bank of printers over there printing away stuff and you want to see what's going on. Uh, the phone app is super handy for that. But again, quality is going to be exactly the same across the board. And I'm sure there's a ton of other ones that I'm missing on the consumer end, mid-level printer. The, you have the Piopolis of the world and I'm sure you can go on Alibaba and find some off-brand ones. I've done that before. They work fine. Like, the, the, the secret in this industry is they're all using basically the same technology from a company called Chitu Box. Um, it's all the same stuff. Like, there's no difference. So the difference is you're going to find, if you go watch some of these uh, vid review videos, is you know they start nitpicking about where the USB key is, where the power switch is, things that really don't matter. Now, the downside to resin 3D printing is you're going to have post-processing to do and Frankly, it's a friggin' mess to deal with. Uh, when you're done with a print, you pull it off the printer. It's a dripping resin everywhere. You have to clean it. Usually that's a two-step process involving uh, some solvents, IPA or denatured alcohol. Uh, some people use acetone. I don't use that, but I use denatured alcohol. So you have this whole cleaning process to get all the extra resin off of it. Then you have a curing process where you put it under UV light again for... Uh, period of time, depending on what resin you use. So the post-processing gets any remaining uncured resin cured up so it's completely safe, right? And uncured resin is somewhere between toxic and 
industrial chemical, you know, depending on where you are. So you generally want to use well-ventilated area. You want to use eye protection. You have to wear gloves. If you get it on, you're going to get a chemical burn. Uh, it's kind of a mess to deal with, right? Um, that's the price you pay for higher quality and better, uh, longer lasting molds. That's the price you pay. So not only are you going to buy a printer, you're going to need the wash and cure station. The Elegu Mercury XS is what I have. I like it because it's a two, two piece system. So you can kind of get a good workflow going. You can be cleaning and curing at the same time. Um, you can DIY it if you want. But again, if it's your first time, just buy the bundle and be done with it. Um, but once you're cured, you're pretty much good to go. You have a resin lure, you have a resin mold, you can get to work and go to town. Now, people always ask me, like, how long do these resin molds last? Um, I, I really don't know. I have not had one fail. I have a mold that I have shot at least a thousand times and it's still going strong, right? Uh, that's using the uh, Sariatex Sculpt resin, which I recommend. It's a high temp resin. You can use just about any resin to make a mold, by the way. And um, it, it'll kind of warp over time is what I found. And, you know, you can put it in a clamp and clamp it up and go to town if you want. Uh, but it, those will eventually wear out. The Sariatex scope, again, I don't know where the limit is. I haven't hit it yet. Links in the description for all the printers I mentioned here. Again, just dive in, figure out what you want to do. There is no wrong answer here. Um, just get going and you'll find what you like, what you don't like, and, and kind of go from there. But the time to get in is now because it's so incredibly dirt cheap for the quality we have these days. It's absolutely stunning. So here is a video where I talk about FEM versus resin printing in more detail, specifically around lure design and mold uh, making. And here is a playlist where I've kind of put together all of the most recent reviews of 3D printers, specifically resin 3D printers and, you know, good, bad, ugly by people who do that for a living. So take care, tight lines, go get a 3D printer.